aka Patterson. Let's go back to an alternate timeline in France and American animation. Uh, this alternate timeline is a payoff. It's a payoff of experimental films that swung for the fences that introduced giant psychedelic world encompassing ideas. 1987, Gandahar might be known to a lot of you as Light Years. This movie. It's not spoken about often anymore. If you watch this movie, it's available now on Amazon Prime. You get education of what could have been. And this is a part of a run of French science fiction fantasy films that at the time were just amazing. These things blew your hair back. They were showing nudity and there was violence and there were big ideas. And no one else in the animation world was close. But the French fade away and the Japanese pick up the baton. Gandahar is a transitional animated movie in the history of world animation, not American animation. We got to talk about it. 1987, Gandahar. Let's go. Quiet on the set. Camera speed. Sound production. Take one. Action. Welcome back to some of that Saturday animation cereal bowl drip. I'm just hoping you, you're going back a little bit. And if you're not aware of this practice, during my time, aka Powders, my film buffers, during this generation, you would wake up and just get new things. You would get a couple of hours of new stuff. What am I talking about? You would wake up and just get a few hours of new cartoons new previews, segments, commercials, and you'd just be inundated just with colors and shapes. And during my generation, they allowed advertising. They allowed cartoons to kind of work as advertising. So a lot of the cartoons doubled as a trip to the toy store. And the toy industry exploded. The animation industry exploded so much so that we kind of have this nostalgia pocket that a lot of you are overly <laughs> and unhealth and unhealthily can I say that uh, obsessed with. But we look back at those times when we're younger because we had uh, open eyes and the willingness to explore. I think that's important. I think some of the parables and some of the stories that we got with G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Transformers, uh, Silverhawks, uh, some of those episodes highly underrated. Thundercats, uh, the list goes on. But a lot of these cartoons, they had real intent behind them. Now, some of the execution wavers because it's still a Saturday morning children's cartoon. But some of these seasons would run 50 or 60 episodes, 30 episodes. So we would just sit down for years and just get new things. And then later watch reruns when we came home from school or in syndication. So it was really almost like, if you look at it, it's almost like 20 years. And this is even as you're going into adulthood, even when you're going into your teen years, uh, you constantly saw this material. So a lot, of, a lot of you, you grew up, you got careers, you started families, got a little bit of a bankroll, probably when you went dual income, and that disposable money on your end goes to re-exploring your childhood. I don't know, a little bit unhealthy? Because <laughs> we got to move on from it. So that's why we do, and that's my long explanation, that's why we do cartoons and animation on the AKA Pad Film Buff podcast. And I say us, meaning me and the AKA Pad Army, because we do have people here working behind the scenes dedicated to the cause. And, and what's the cause of the AKA Pad Film Buff podcast? We got to re-steer, re-steer, realign uh, some of these conversations about movies, film, animation. I don't think there's any 
solid dedication to animation at all. So that kind of leads us to Gandahar. Could you go through some of the animation history books? And I have them here at the AKA Pad Library. You flip through the books and you don't see Gandahar. You don't see French much. You don't see a focus. There's no, there's no chapter. There's just blurbs. A little paragraph here and there. Mentions directors, release dates, distribution companies, and the book is moving on. Well, here we go, guys. The AKA Pad Film Buff podcast is correcting the book when we discuss Gain the Heart, 1987. Wikipedia, French animated science fiction fantasy film written and directed by Rene Leroux, based on Jean Pierre Angelvon's 1969 novel Les Homes Machinus Contour Gandahar, The Machine Men vs. Gandahar. I will say right now, The Machine Men. And they're, they're featured on the thumbnail poster for, for this episode. The Machine Men are some of the amazing, simple, dreadful robot designs of the era. We've seen a lot of Hive enemies during this time. Now, when we get into the plot of Gandahar, we can cross Titan AE with Dark Crystal. We can... Almost get the ending out of Dark Crystal. Not so much of a prophecy. There's a prophecy in the movie that our guy, our main, uh, (laughs) our dude, the guy we're following, he needs to fulfill his own prophecy given to him by Metamorphosis, a giant hive mind that they created. And there's a scene in the movie too with this girl that he basically goes into the cells and the into the actual brain of metamorphosis and they're in within like the cells they're interacting with the cells and they're talking to it they kind of make love and she's like topless and blue it's just really good stuff and then we go ahead in a thousand years where he's got fulfilled a prophecy to take this thing out and along the way we get all the um, you know, you're a hero, we're going to put you on a journey, and you're going to run into a lot of weird things, tropes. And this is a little bit of where, when we look at Dark Crystal, and we look at Titan AE, you know, like the beats are so similar, and we can kind of draw it all to Gain the Heart. So Gain the Heart also is a part of this, if you want to call it a trilogy. We have Gain the Heart, a.k.a. Light Years. We can watch that with Time Masters, which is featured in length on my YouTube channel. And then we get Fantastic Planet. Three movies, three Frenchies doing similar psychedelic fantasy. Very indicative of the time. And then it just doesn't happen for France. This is the pain of learning about this stuff sometimes because they were pun pun intended like years ahead of everyone else they were doing adult animation seriously way earlier than japan before we got anime and when it didn't happen as an industry in france and keep in mind i think uh uh what's it uh illumin uh illumination the minion guys right there that company i think they're out of paris france i i'm pretty sure right because they were sponsoring the olympics that were just there so it's not like animation hasn't left france but what happened was uh the remnants of this or the growth of this industry went from original ideas original content to production so you're doing commercials you're filling in for movies The business evolves, but at the same time, you still maintain the status quo. And the status quo sometimes gives you chances to come up with things. Like Illumination, uh, you kind of want to say Dominions and Despicable Me uh, is the the franchise. Uh, My, you know, during the animation boom or during my time for CGI 
animated features, computer generated, it, everything was Shrek. And, you know, we got Shrek. I think we got four Shrek movies and two or three Puss in Boot movies. I think Puss in Boot might be at three with a TV series. It, it's insane that Shrek is still going to this day. So the industry overall transitions more into child content. But where's the seriousness from the French? Well, it pretty much died with this movie. And it's it's heartbreaking because you see how serious anime got and still is. But during this time, like only a few years few years later, the entire bootleg market, the entire VHS market, all drove towards anime. They wanted the crazy cyberpunk sci-fi. They wanted the nudity. They wanted the violence. And they just wanted a seriousness. And when that died off, adult animation did end. And it's sad. But Gain the Heart, it's available on Amazon Prime right now. I love the imagery of this movie. I think this movie moves. Some of the music... The pacing, the dialogue, the overall capabilities of the production house and the way that they finalize and put this movie together, it may zone, you, you might zone out a little bit. You might just get a little bit impatient, but it's up to you to be a good audience member, for you to be a good viewer, for you to sit down, drink your tea, and enjoy something. There was a lot of times uh, I sat up and I was on the edge of my seat watching this movie because I was just thrilled at what they were showing me. The idea that they go into a giant brain and interact with the cells is fantastic. We have mutants, these individuals that are kind of outcasts, but not, but they they see the future, the past, and the present at the same time. And yes, they have dialogue in in that vein we get those guys early we get the con the council you know kind of similar to tarna in heavy metal but we get the council and they all they all have wacky things one's got got bird bird wings on her head but we just get this uh ancient knowledge feeling that again is a fantasy trope so i don't know ak powders i totally enjoy game the heart uh, this is eye-opening when I watch it because, again, we like to fantasize about near misses using uh, airplane collision commentary. I don't, know, I don't know if you guys follow the comedy of George Carlin. It's a bit by his, but I call this a near miss. And I just want to bring a little bit of attention to it. Uh, music, though. I really did enjoy the music. Uh, Gabriel Yard did the music for this movie. Wikipedia says uh, budget 5.5 million. It looks at uh, even for the time. And the box office, 370,000. So, uh, yeah, and we see it a lot. Some of these animated uh, animation that hits, it really is, uh, you know, you just have to kind of do the right things at the right time. We've seen a lot out of Don Bluth. Uh, Titan AE included. We we were covering the early two thousands push for young male adult animation industry wide between Fox, Warner Brothers, and Disney, Alanis, The Lost Empire, Sinbad, Road El Dorado, Treasure Planet, company wide. You know, Dream Dreamwave or DreamWorks was was involved with that. Uh, it just goes on, and it there is we know for sure that children like animation so it's, there's like a built-in audience for that when we get out of that uh it's very risky and it t the pursuit of that and to be consistent with it meaning your studio you have to do more than one movie you kind of have to do a movie every other year uh just to keep yourself in business it's a hard business it's a tough business you would think this movie would at least break even, but it doesn't even come close. And there you go. Like, gain the hard fails. The industry, the industry of a country with huge ambition fails with it. It's sad. But gain the hard is worth your time. It's worth your attention. Feel free. Check it out. 
Amazon Prime, you might have a couple commercials to fight through. I believe you can also YouTube it. I believe you can get this uh, fully uh, dubbed on YouTube for free. Okay, AKA Powder's Rock and Roll. Okay, that's a wrap.